Every gardener knows the grind of traditional composting. Piling, watering, turning, waiting and turning again. It's hot, smelly, labour-intensive. And sometimes, after months of effort, what you get is half-rotted material instead of that deep, rich, black humus your plants truly crave. But what if I told you there's a method that skips all that turning, avoids overheating, and still gives you jet-black humus that forms naturally, without a single shovel lift? This method is called cold fermentation composting, and it's quietly revolutionising how serious soil builders think about organic matter breakdown. The truth about composting most gardeners don't realise. Hot composting has been celebrated for years as the right way to make compost. Hit 55 to 65 degrees Celsius, kill pathogens and break down waste quickly. But in that heat you also lose carbon, nitrogen and even delicate microbial life. The pile literally burns off the most valuable compounds as carbon dioxide and ammonia gas. What's left can be nutrient-rich, yes, but biologically flat. Cold fermenting, on the other hand, mimics what happens on a forest floor. The breakdown is slow, cool, fungal and entirely microbe-driven. Instead of burning off carbon, it locks it into stable humus, the black, spongy, long-lasting organic matter that defines fertile soil. This isn't about speed. It's about depth. In nature, no one turns the forest floor, yet every year it builds centimetres of humus that can hold up to 20 times its weight in water and release nutrients for decades. That's the system we're copying. The secret is letting microbes do the work in the right environment. In a cold ferment, you're not relying on heat to decompose material, you're creating conditions that favour anaerobic and facultative microbes, the same types that ferment silage or make sauerkraut. These microbes thrive in moist, low oxygen conditions and excel at breaking down cellulose and lignin into humic substances. To start, you need the right balance of carbon and nitrogen, but the ratios are slightly different from hot composting. Instead of the typical 30 to 1 ratio, Cold fermentation works best around 15 to 1 to 20 to 1. That's heavier on nitrogen. The reason is that microbial activity is slower in cool conditions. So a bit more nitrogen keeps the process alive without rotting. A mix of two parts green waste like kitchen scraps, fresh grass or manure, to one part brown material such as dry leaves, sawdust or shredded paper works perfectly. Layer the materials in a pit, barrel or sealed drum. Unlike regular compost, you don't want airflow. You want a tightly packed, moist, semi-anaerobic environment. Sprinkle each layer with a little soil or finished compost to inoculate it with microbes. Then moisten the entire pile until it feels like a wrung-out sponge. Seal it with a lid, tarp or even a layer of banana leaves or plastic sheeting to prevent oxygen and moisture loss. The fermentation stage is where the magic happens. Within a few days, you'll notice a mild, sour, earthy smell. That's fermentation, not rot. The microbes are converting sugars, proteins and cellulose into organic acids and enzymes that slowly digest the rest of the material. Unlike a hot compost pile that collapses after the first few weeks, this cold ferment keeps working for months at a steady, low-energy pace. The transformation takes two to four months, depending on your materials and temperature. During this time, it's crucial not to disturb it. Turning introduces oxygen, which resets the process and can lead to partial decomposition instead of full humification. If you see white fungal threads forming inside after a month or so, you're on the right track. That's the hallmark of fungal dominance, the stage where organic matter starts turning into humus. By the end, what you'll have isn't just decomposed waste, it's a soft, dark, crumbly mass that smells like forest soil. This is true humus, not unfinished compost. It's stable, nutrient-rich, and teeming with beneficial microbes ready to transform your soil. 
The beauty of this cold ferment is that it's incredibly versatile. Once matured, you can use it directly as a top dressing or blend it into your soil. Because it's already biologically balanced, it won't burn roots like fresh compost might. For vegetable beds, mix one part fermented humus to three parts existing soil. For perennials and trees, spread a two to three centimeter layer around the base and cover it with mulch to protect it from sunlight. In sandy or compacted soils, you'll see structural improvements within weeks. Better water retention, deeper color, and visible fungal growth. If you want to take it further, you can make a liquid humus extract. Mix one part cold ferment humus with five parts non-chlorinated water, stir or shake for two to three minutes, and let it sit for a few hours. The liquid that forms can be applied as a soil drench every two weeks to inoculate new beds with beneficial microbes. So, why does this process outperform traditional compost when it comes to long-term soil health? Well, hot compost, you see, feeds your plants for just a season. But cold fermented humus, now that feeds the soil itself for years. The reason, really, lies in its carbon structure. Humus made through fermentation is um, chemically stable and forms these colloids that bind nutrients, resist leaching and buffer pH. It's a bit like building a slow-release bank account of fertility, if you will. You're not just adding organic matter here, you're actually adding soil architecture. And, you know, this process also retains more nutrients because it never overheats. Nitrogen stays in its ammonium form instead of, well, escaping as gas. And phosphorus remains bioavailable. The result is a humus that supports microbial diversity and, honestly, reduces the need for synthetic fertilizers. You'll also notice your soil stays moist longer, your plants show deeper color and pest pressure drops because biologically active soils naturally suppress pathogens. So, let's say you have a small backyard garden. All you need to do is dig a pit about 60 centimetres deep and one metre wide, then fill it with alternating layers of kitchen scraps and chopped dry leaves, sprinkling a handful of soil between each layer. Next, pour enough water to moisten everything evenly and cover it tightly. Now, just forget about it for three months. When you return, you'll find black, rich, humic material at the bottom, the kind of soil builders use to call black gold. If you prefer containers, you can use a sealed plastic drum or even a large bucket with a loose-fitting lid. Honestly, the process is exactly the same. Just keep it shaded and cool. Once it's finished, store the humus in a dry, covered spot. It really only gets better with age. Here's the takeaway for serious soil builders. You don't need to slave over a compost pile or chase the perfect temperature. Nature has already designed a system that does the work quietly, efficiently and completely. Cold fermentation is how forests, meadows and even wetlands build humus naturally. And now you can harness that same process in your own garden. If you're tired of the constant turning and waiting, just try this method once. Let biology take over. You'll never look at composting the same way again. If this guide gave you real insight, hit that subscribe button on the Soil Doctor channel and share it with another grower who's ready to build living soil the smart way. Because honestly, the best compost isn't the one you sweat over. It's the one that makes humus all by itself.